Well, Valentine's Day has come and gone, but Love Your Library Week, that deserves a full seven days. And we're with the very lovable Diane Mars-Smith with the Friends of Birch Bay Library. How are you, Di? Really good, Sasha. How are you? We have lots to talk about. Always have lots to talk about Always. with this project as um, it's an ever-evolving project, I think is probably the best way to put it. I would agree. Yeah. Always so, changing. So the original plan was to take this property and uh, I'll tell you what, we're going to get into that later. We're okay. getting, we'll get into the nuts and the bolts later. What I want to talk about is Love Your Library Week, some okay. of the services that are currently offered, and in particular, FOBL, the Friends of Birch Bay Library, which has been a very strong organization in support of this project, the primary organization in support of this project, and some of the things that, that you're doing, including a, a campaign that we're going to ask for some help on here in a little bit. But Love Your Library Week, Di. Yeah. Um, Birch Bay has been in desperate need of enhanced library services for quite some time. I would say, all things considered, the services that are currently being offered are pretty darn good for not actually having a bona fide official library in town. I would agree. I would say yes. So we have a four-hour weekly bookmobile stop, and the bookmobile comes three to seven every Wednesday. You can put books on hold if you need a book request. The ladies are great. They will help you pick out some items. Um, you can put interlibrary loans on request. So if we don't have something in our catalog, you can actually order something outside of our system. Um, they bring all your holds. They have a browsing collection. If you've never been on the bookmobile, I encourage you to go on. It's a very small but mighty little roving library. I would liken it to a book tank. Yeah, it is. It's huge. I mean, yeah. the, the bus is big. Um, and the collection is very good in there. We have programs that we do for summer. And um, Greta, who is one of the bookmobile drivers, she does kids' services. So she'll have some programs for the kids in the spring and in the summertime when the weather's nice. So we try to give some library service in the small amount of time that we have. I don't think people truly, I know I haven't truly understood the full scope of programs and opportunities and services offered through the library. I was telling you before we, before we turned on the camera that my wife was saying the other day, I just don't know what to read. I know what I like to read, but I can't pick out a specific book. And I suggested, well, go down to the bookmobile. That, that's kind of their job. And that's, that's in its simplest form. Yeah. But really the amount of services offered through a library, and you and I have talked about this before, are much more extensive than what many people realize. Yep, you can, um, you know, books are our game. So we can help you find a book, recommend books, give you some things that you may have not thought you would like. We call them surprise selections. So you can get that service through our branches. Um, we offer programs for kids and adults. That could be story time, that could be a team paint night, which is very popular, um, or a historical or cultural program for adults as well. We do summer reading. We have something every quarter for people to come to the library, learn, yeah. explore, create. Um, and we, then we do offer digital services. So if you can't get to the library, we can help you download items. Um, onto an e-reader, we can teach you how to use that. So if you're having computer trouble or, or need tech help with that, we can do that for you. Um, you can use library services uh, for a library. Well, our library offers computers. But here, what I was trying to say as I stumbled, is that we have Wi-Fi here. Yes. 24-7. So if you're on the bay and all of a sudden you realize, ooh, I need to check my email or I need to send something, you can just pull up in the parking lot and there's no password. You just log into the WCLS public Wi-Fi and you can use that. And you do, you see that a lot of times when you drive by on the drive, you'll see somebody parked in here and, and, and taking advantage of those services. So. Yeah, so that is something that's uh, free and available every day of the week. You say free, but as we talk about all these services, they're not free for the library. And that's kind of where FOBL comes in, Friends yeah. of Birch Bay Library, a fundraising arm or organization that not only helps with these programs, helps with the scope of this project. Again, we'll, we'll get onto that in a second, but let's talk about FOBL specifically. Sure. This is a group of people that really have a love for this property and the services that 
could potentially be offered here um, and are already supporting some of the services that are offered here. But Fobble is a very important organization in Birch Bay. So Fobble started, uh, Friends of Birch Bay Library, started before I was involved. In about 2015, there was a group of people that got together and they really wanted to have library services here. They basically started out with a penny jar going to um, chamber events saying, hey, everybody, are you interested? We would really like to start a library. And uh, the traction picked up with that. The community showed interest. They approached the Whatcom County Library System, and a partnership was created. And throughout that partnership, Fobble has been the fundraising arm. Um, and we have tried many different techniques for fundraising. And the biggest one that we uh, came across early on in our fundraising efforts was the Washington State appropriation that we applied for and we received uh, that grant. Now, we received $2 million, but the project was a lot more than $2 million. And there is a timeline, so there's a biennium, two-year uh, biennium expiration date. When COVID happened, we had to get really creative because all of our fundraising efforts stopped as the world shut mm -hmm. down. So um, we had our movie nights. The chamber helped sure. us with the movie night. We had a movie night. Um, we've done some things outside uh, on the lawn for chamber events, which has been really great. Um, Kite Festival, you'll see us at Sandcastle. We're selling books. We are cooking hot dogs. You may have come to a breakfast or two. Pretty good pancakes, yeah. Yeah, we flip a lot of pancakes. Sausage is the most popular. Um, but those are ways that we have uh, raised money physically. We've done an online campaign that was pretty successful. And um, we've done Library Giving Day. So that's also um, a program that's online where you can give or you can send money in. And we're always looking for grant opportunities because of the nature of our program, of our project, um, it can be kind of tricky. Bobble does not own this building. Right. So it's not ours, yet we're fundraising for it. Uh, the Whatcom County Library System owns that, so we work in partnership with them. Let's talk about this building now and this project, yeah. which has changed and yes. seen maybe a few hiccups along the road, but I know you've also learned a lot about not only this specific project, but, you know, what members of the community are, are looking for, per se. And I know you've done a lot of grassroots effort and getting out and beating on doors and, and talking to people, especially after the votes didn't pass. So where do we sit now? So where we sit now is this. Uh, we learned a lot from the election. So the LCFA, the capital project that we went out for a vote twice, we needed 60%, so super majority. We were at 59.3 the first time and 58 point something the second time, which is pretty good because our snowbirds had, yeah. uh, in February, they weren't here. So that really told us a lot. It told us that people wanted the library and they were, they were willing to pay a tax to mm -hmm. do that. Um, but it also told us through conversations, social media conversations, letters to the editor, that people really love this building. Like this building is very important to the community. It's history been here in for, Birch Bay. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's been here for over a hundred years, and it's just an iconic building. And people, you know, relate that back to their childhood, growing up, and just seeing it was really important. To nineteen twelve, right? Nineteen twelve. Isn't that when the Titanic sank? I think that's. It what is. It, yeah. I just read an article yeah. about that today, um, and so when we made the large building, which was a seven thousand square foot building, approximately. Uh, we mimicked this, but people really wanted this building. So our LCFA did not pass, still had a lot of people saying, please don't give up. We really want the library. What can you do? And so we looked at this building, we looked at changing the scope of our project. Now our state appropriation is for a 7,600 square foot building. So we sent um, in a request to change the scope of the project to use the house, and we kind of flipped it. So 1,700 square foot library express and community meeting room, 6,000 square foot outdoor community space for community events, um, because the property is quite large, as yes. you know. Um, and we wanted to continue the community partnerships and activities that we had been having with you all in the summertime 
even after the library is built. So we changed our focus and really scaled down. We offered the same services on a smaller scale, though. And it is to use this house, the first floor. Um, I do get questions about why we can't use the second floor. And uh, we have ADA requirements. So mm -hmm. we would need to put an elevator in. Really expensive. I was going to say, that's not cheap. <laughs> it's not cheap. So how do you do that? Keep your floor space. And um, so right now, we're just focusing on first floor refurbishing the outside of the house. So this house needs to be brought up to code, wiring changes. We need to reinforce some of the floors. Yeah, there's inherent challenges there's with a 113-year-old house or 112-year-old house. Is. And then if you look at the front porch, you know, there's some rockery work that needs to be done, some masonry work. Um, and it's going to cost some money. So our hope now is that we will be able to um, do some things, maybe keep that $2 million for the scope of work change request we put in. And if you read the Northern Light article last month, it said that we were denied, and we were denied for the small project. We still have the money for the large project. Um, Representative Shoemake, well, I should say Senator Shoemake, yes. I will correct myself, um, has been working on our behalf along with Joe uh, Timmons and Alicia Rule, our representatives down in Olympia, and there is a group of um, representatives from the library and from the Friends that will have a meeting on Thursday the 23rd with our senators. So we have one shot, which is really out of the ordinary. Normally you get denied and that's yeah. it. Um, but through the work, through our legislators up here, we've got a shot to go down, plead our case, talk about the why, explain why the community wants this and why we need a library in our area and what that will do for us. And you can go and talk until you're blue in the face about how much the community wants it, but letters from the community yes. speak volumes. And so that's, that's a great way immediately yeah. to support this library project is to sit down in front of your computer and type out an email. It is. And so um, through the chamber and through the Friends web page, uh, our webpage, our Facebook page, and we will be sending out a letter to our membership. We're going to be asking people to write letters of support. Why do you love the house? Because that was a big thing. Um, why do you want it to be refurbished, renovated, and uh, why do you want a library here? So we really need community support now more than ever. Um, as we go down, we'd like to have letters in hand, uh, but you can email either the chamber or myself. Um, or the senators and the representatives directly. And we'll get that information out. Again, we're visiting with Diane Mars Smith with the Friends of Birch Bay Library. Um, a lot of new people have moved into the area. As we know, Birch Bay is growing, and that's, that's certainly a great thing. And there may be some that aren't completely familiar with the scope of this project or what this project's all about or may want to help and they don't know how. The easiest way right away is, is, is to join FOBL, um, that yes. organization. It's the fundraising arm, very active, and, and that's, that's step number one, wouldn't you say? I would, and if you uh, need to get a hold of us, you can do that through the chamber, you can go through our website or Facebook, send us a message. Uh, those messages, I see every single one of them, so I'll be the one answering you. If you wanna donate, we do book donations. Um, if you wanna come and help for an event, if you have a fundraising idea or an event you think we should put on, we need you. So we need you to come talk with us. Uh, our meetings are the second Monday of every month at 6.30 and they are here at the house. And you can just knock on the front door and I'll let you in. And you can come in and have a meeting and get to know everybody. So we're always looking for help and we love partners and we love volunteers. It's Love Your Library Week. Di, this has um, always been a community center. Obviously, we've, we've talked about how this property means a lot to the Birch Bay community. We've used it extensively for chamber events and other events. We had the, the Lummy, the Trail of Tears Carvers here with an event a couple of years ago. Um, regardless of wh where this is, the ultimate goal is to keep this a community hub and a community center. We want to make that very clear. We do. And uh, that is why we are working so hard to get the funding uh, to create the space, create the community meeting room, and to be able to have events here. Um, and we really appreciate WCLS working with us as we work to fundraise. Mm -hmm. If you want to donate, 
please do. There's ways to do that. You can look on our website. Again, you can contact me or you can contact the Watt Company Library System. And um, we love donations and that just helps us get one step closer to making this a reality. Getting back to the uh, letter writing campaign as well, we do have some information on our Facebook page uh, that has uh, where you can send that letter, whether it be to us at the chamber, we can make sure it gets in their hands. Um, you can also send them directly to the lawmakers or the legislators as well. Um, although in a situation like this, I'd almost rather put it in your hands because I know they're going to read it if they put it in your hands, correct? Yeah, we would love handwritten letters. Um, we love letters from kids and teens. so. They can draw a picture, they can write why they love their library. Um, that would be really lovely to take with us and um, we look forward to reading those. Well, Di, let's get this done. I want to get it done. Let's get it done. We will. Bet. That's Diane Mars smith she's the president of the Friends of Birch Bay Library and they are our featured member in this week's Discover Thursday. <laughs>